Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Go Funny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below and we'll share it. So today I'm going to be reacting to Prophet Muhammad mentioned in Buddhist scriptures. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Let's discuss the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Buddhist scriptures. Almost all the Buddhist scriptures, they speak about a Maitri to come. It's also mentioned in Chikka Varsuna Setanta, D11176. It says that another Buddha will come by the name of Maitri, the Holy One, the Supreme One, the Enlightened One, endowed with wisdom and conduct, auspicious, having knowledge of the universe. Whatever he will get from supernatural knowledge, he will preach to the whole world. He will preach a religion which will be glorious at the beginning, glorious at the climax, and glorious at the end. He will preach a way of life which will be truthful and wholly perfect. He will have several thousands of monks as I have several hundreds of monks. This prophecy is also repeated in the sacred books of the East, volume 35 page number 225, that a Maitri will come with such and such criteria and qualities. And further it says that he will be a leader of thousands of people as I am a leader of hundreds of people. It's further mentioned in the Gospel of Buddha, page number 217 and 18, that Ananda, he asks Buddha that, Oh blessed one, after you have gone, who will guide us? So the Blessed One Buddha, he replied, that I am not the first Buddha in this world, neither am I the last. There will be another Buddha who will come, the Holy One, the Supreme One, the Enlightened One, endowed with wisdom and conduct, the auspicious, having knowledge of the universe. He will preach a good religion. He will preach a religion which will be glorious at the beginning, glorious at the climax, and glorious at the end. He will teach a religion which will be based on truth and will be a perfect way of life. And he will have many thousands of disciples as I have only hundreds of disciples. The Ananda asks Buddha, the Blessed One, how will we know him? So Buddha replies, he will be called as Maitri. Maitri means the merciful, loving kind, compassionate. One equivalent Arabic word is Rahma. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Anbiya, chapter number 21, verse number 107, illa rahmatan lil alameen. We have sent thee not but as a mercy to all the world, as a mercy to all the creatures, as a mercy to the whole of humanity. <laughs> this word Rahma, mercy and its derivatives, are mentioned in the Quran no less than 409 times. And every chapter of the Quran, except for Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, begins with the beautiful formula, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. So the Buddhist scriptures, almost all of them, prophesize about the Maitri that is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi to come. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is further prophesied in the Buddhist scriptures, which is mentioned in the sacred books of the East, volume number 11, page number 36. Mahaparinibbana Sutta, chapter number 2, verse number 32, it says that as for the Buddha, there are no exoteric or esoteric teachers. And O Ananda, the Tathagatas, that means the teachers, have nothing like a closed fist. We cannot keep the knowledge to ourselves. It should be proclaimed. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whatever he received as a wahi from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he proclaimed to the whole of humanity. And he told his disciples that never keep it away from humankind. Proclaim it and spread it. That's what's mentioned in the prophecy. There's nothing like esoteric or exoteric. 
everything should be told to humankind. It's further mentioned in the Buddhist scriptures, in the sacred books of the East, volume number 11, page number 97, Mahaparinibbana Sutta, chapter number 5, verse number 36. It says that as Buddha had a servitor by the name of Ananda, so shall the Maitri have a servitor. And we know from history, from the series of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the servitor of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Anas. May Allah be pleased with him. Yadila one. Who was the son of Malik. May Allah be pleased with him. And Hazrat Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, he says, that my parents gave me to the Prophet at the age of eight. And his mother told the Prophet, O Messenger of Allah, take this to be your servant. And Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, he said, that the Prophet referred to him as his son, or the little beloved one. And we know how that Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, he always stood by the Prophet in times of peace and in times of war, in times of safety, in times of danger. He can very well be compared to Ananda. We know when the mad elephant rushes at Buddha, Ananda stood by Buddha. Similarly, we know how that Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, in the Battle of Uhud, at the age of 11, even when the enemies were close to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hadrat Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, stood by the Prophet. Even in the Battle of Hunayn, at the age of 16, when the enemies who were archers surrounded the Prophet, yet Hadrat Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, he stood by the Prophet. He can very well be compared like Ananda when the mad elephant rushes at Buddha and Ananda stays by Buddha. So this is the fulfillment of the prophecy that the Maitri will have a servitor. It is further mentioned in the Gospel of Buddha, page number 214, that this Maitri to come, this other Buddha to come, will have six qualities. The first is, he will get enlightenment at night. Number two, he will become bright when he gets enlightened. Number three, he will die a natural death. Number four, he will die at night. Number five, when he dies, he'll become bright. And number six, once he dies, he will never be seen in the bodily form in this earth again. These six qualities and criteria befit no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We know that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the first wahi he got was at night time. As I mentioned earlier, the Quran says in Surah Dukhan, chapter 44, verse number 2 and 3, and Surah Qadr, chapter 97, verse number 1, that the Quran was revealed in the night of power. It further says, he will be lit up. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had become bright, he was enlightened. It further says he will die a natural death. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a natural death. Point number four, he will die at night. And we know from the hadith of Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, that she did not have oil in the lamp. So she borrowed the oil from the neighbor, indicating it was night when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died. It further says that he will become bright at the time of death. And Hazrat Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, says that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked bright when he died. And the last point is that when he dies, he will never be seen in the bodily form on this earth. I know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he died in the bodily form, he's buried in Medina, and he was never seen in bodily form again. All these criteria mentioned in the Buddhist scriptures befit no one but the last and final messenger Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's further mentioned in the Buddhist scriptures, in the sacred books of the East, volume number 10, page number 68, it says that the Tattagattas, they are only preachers. That means the Buddha has to come. They can only preach. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ghashia, chapter number 88, verse number 21, Fazakkir inna manta muzakkir. Allah says to the Prophet, your job is to deliver the message. Giving hidayah is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's further mentioned in sacred books of the East, volume number 10, page number 67, that to go to paradise, even your good deeds are responsible. Your good deeds are responsible for you to go to paradise. And Allah says in Surah Al-Asr, chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3, wal asr, Inna al wa amilu sabr. Which means, by the token of time, man is very in a state of loss, except those who have faith, those who have righteous deed, those who exhort people to truth, and those who exhort people to patience and perseverance. One of the criteria to go to Jannah 
is Amal Salihat, righteous deed, which is mentioned in the Buddhist scriptures. And further, it's mentioned in Dhammapad, Mattaya Sutta, 151. It gives the criteria of the Buddha, the final Maitri to come. It says that he will be a mercy to humankind. He will be gentle. He will be an example to humankind. He says he will be kind. And he will be truthful. So all these criteria befit no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was in brief regarding Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Buddhist scriptures. Uh, big shout out to the person that suggested this. This person always gives me the best, some of the best reactions that I actually do. They give good videos to react to and they show me different things, different things. And I really enjoy such things. So a big shout out to you, you know yourself. And um, when you think about it, I really admire Dr. Zaki Naik, uh, Ami Didat, because not only have they studied the Quran, they've gone out of the way to study these other religions. So when they speak to you, they speak because they've interpreted these things and they've found the similarities in whatever they, they want to see. And they bring forth that information to us to also open our minds to these things out there. I really don't know much about Buddhist scriptures. I've never even read one, so I wouldn't want to lie. So that's what I'm saying. Thanks to these guys, are now able to get a different point of view from Dr. Zaki Naik, which was very, very interesting. I'm learning things. For me, I always take this as a learning point in life. So yeah, for me, it was learning. I don't know what you guys feel about this video. Is there any contradictions? Is there additions? Anything is welcome as long as it's positive. So yeah, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.